This week on BuzzFeed Unsolved, we once again tackle the age-old question, do aliens exist? To attempt to answer that question, we'll take a deep dive into the government's newly uncovered Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. And in particular, we'll examine some recent video evidence that has emerged from the program. And it's good footage. Is it some good stuff? I think. You got your little peepers on it? Dare I say, is it undeniable? I have to say this every single time we do an episode about aliens, but I do believe in aliens. And I have to say this every time as well, he believes in aliens, but in a very boring way. I just don't think they're bipedal. I think they're probably clouds or a little bacteria. They're intelligent. Do you think they have belly buttons? Not gonna play this game with you. I'm not, I refuse. I just wanna I know, know if you what you're trying. I know buttons. what you're trying to do right now. I just wanna I'm know gonna, if you think I'm they have belly buttons. I'm opening the file. We're gonna get into it. Didn't answer it. In 2007, three senators, Ted Stevens, a Republican from Alaska, Daniel K. Inoue, a Democrat from Hawaii, and Harry Reid, a Democrat from Nevada, and the Senate Majority Leader at the time, worked to secure funding for a new secret, but not classified government program to investigate reports of UFOs, or as they've been more recently dubbed, UAPs, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. Why, why change it? There are people crazier than me that have tarnished the reputation of UFOs to the point where they now have to rebrand it to UAPs. And even when I say UAPs, does, not, does that not sound military? Yeah, I guess people like you have sort of tarnished the, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Senator Reed's interest in the unexplained phenomena stemmed from a meeting with Nevada billionaire Robert Bigelow, who has stated that he is absolutely convinced aliens have visited Earth. Years after their meeting, Bigelow received a letter from a senior member of a federal national security agency with a PhD. According to Reed, the letter expressed interest in Bigelow's fascination with UFOs. The individual told Senator Reed after meeting with both him and Bigelow that studies should be done on the matter, and he created an outline for what should be covered in the study. It was then that Reed connected with fellow Senator Stevens and Inoue, both of whom had long been a part of the Defense Appropriations Subcommittee. The three met for what Reed described as, quote, one of the easiest meetings I ever had, end quote. Stevens' interest in UFOs stemmed from his time in the military. He said that he never reported seeing suspicious things for fear of damage it may cause to his reputation or career. To fund the project, Reed Stevens and Inoue decided to use black money, as Reed calls it, or black budget, as it's more commonly referred to, which is government money used for classified programs and projects. That way, the formation of the program would not be debated on the Senate floor. And just like that, the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program was created in 2007. And why that's crazy is because, you know, as a society, we haven't seen the government even admit UFOs are real, and now we're learning that they have, essentially, we now know they were lying to us. One of my big dreams is to work at a place like this where it's like secret, but the entrance to the place doesn't look like the place where you're going. Oh, so you go behind like it's, a bookshelf or yeah, something? Yeah, or it's like or a like... bagel shop and you walk to the counter and you're like, I'll have a sesame, and the person behind the counter just says like, we're all out of sesame, and then you have to say something like, huh, love a sesame on a Tuesday. And then they're like, right this way, sir. And I think it would be cleaner if you just had to order a specific order. Like, I'll take a bagel with locks and two chives. Oh, two chives. And they'll say, the cold brew's right over there. And you take the cold brew handle. Cha -chunk. Cha -chunk. A big pneumatic yeah. tube comes down and you get sucked you up. You sucked it. up and it has that great noise. Like, yeah. In all, at least $22 million was spent on the project, with most of it going to Bigelow's company, Bigelow Aerospace. The company's underground Las Vegas complex would be home to the research it conducted for the program, while the program itself was operated out of the Pentagon. In 2010, military intelligence official Luis Elizondo took over the program. Elizondo was an experienced Department of Defense employee who worked on classified counterintelligence missions and operated with top-level security clearance. He claims that the program was so secretive that even some of those inside the Pentagon were unaware of its existence. The program's mission was to investigate detection, eyewitness sightings, and or military video footage of unknown items, identify them, and then, according to Elizondo, quote, ascertain and determine if that information is a potential threat to national security, end quote. Anomalous aircrafts that would operate outside the normal laws of aerodynamics would be investigated. Elizondo describes aircrafts, quote, that don't have any obvious flight services, any obvious forms of propulsion, and maneuvering in ways that include extreme maneuverability beyond, I would submit, the healthy G-forces of a human or anything biological, end quote. The information the program collected came mainly from military personnel, in particular, military pilots, who witnessed the bizarre occurrences. When you're in the military, 
you're probably uh, probably got a lot of discipline. Probably um, not rattled by too much. Yeah, they see planes fly by them every day. I, I'm imagining for the mm -hmm. past like 20 years of their life. I see that all the time. So they're up there in the air. They're seeing things move in ways that defy the laws of physics, mm -hmm. things that would make their bodies implode if they were inside that yeah. vehicle. And they have footage of it. So I just don't know how you could look at that kind of stuff. I can't wait to hear these folks holler. Are they hollering? What do you, what, you think they're, they're all pulled from some kind of rally or something? They, they, these are trained professionals. They're yeah, but you said they, they go nuts. They yeah, go crazy for these UADs. What are they called? UAPs? See, this is, it's not catchy enough. What is it called? UAPs. UAPs. It's not supposed to be catchy. It should be somewhat catchy. If it gets catchy, then it starts to slip into the, you know, I guess. Start saying UAPs all the time. Let's make it just as crazy as UFOs. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Those investigating the incidents were highly trained and qualified. According to Elizondo, quote, we had PhDs, we had CI people, we had trained intelligence officers and human case officers, pretty much a full range of talent. Most of us tend to be, by nature, skeptical because we are in the field of intelligence and national security. But I think once you get into the data itself and the specifics regarding what we're actually seeing, we begin to realize that there may be something here a little bit more than just what people think are drones or whatever people may chalk it up to be, end quote. He went on, quote, there's a lot of rigor and diligence that's placed in looking at these. We look and say, oh, that's X, Y, Z, and the reason why it looks this way is because of ABC. But unfortunately, there are some other incidents that can't be explained. And what our job is to do is to figure out, really it's very simple, what is it and how does it work, end quote. The previous director of the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program created a briefing summary in 2009 on the program that stated, quote, what was once considered science fiction is now science fact, end quote. That's a good quote. That's ballsy. That should be on a t-shirt. The logo should just be like an alien just giving the middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. that seems like something he practiced in the mirror several times that morning. Yeah, he was, he was probably like, way less cool about it. He was like, it's science fiction, it's <laughs> fact. The cadence was yes. off. That's gonna be good. Nailed it, no, no, dial it back, dial it back. His wife walks in on him when he's practicing. Ah, what yeah, God, <laughs> just, uh, I was just, uh, yeah, I heard yeah. knocking around here. <laughs> it's a big day for me. Uh, yeah, I'm sure he delivered it with some kind of gravitas. I don't know. Even maybe. better if zero gravitas. Gravitas. Gravitas? It's gravitas. Gravitas? <laughs> Around the same time, promising discoveries were made by the program, and in an attempt to limit access to the information, Reed requested that it be given a special designation of, quote, restricted special access program, end quote, but his request was denied. The brief summary also stated that if some of the discovered technology were to be used against the U.S., we would have no way of defending ourselves against it. According to Elizondo, the sightings often took place near nuclear facilities, be it power plants or ships. The program investigated unidentified flying objects and metal alloys and other debris picked up from encounters. Elizondo said of the program and the objects investigated, quote, if you're asking my personal opinion from here, look, I've gotta be honest with you. I don't know where it's from, but we're pretty sure it's not here. Now, what does that mean it's out there? Whether or not it's Russian or Chinese inside or little green men from Mars or frankly your neighbor's dog, I wanted to purposely steer away from that because I wanted to focus on truly the raw science. What were we seeing? And did it pose a threat to national security? End quote. Love it. This guy, he knows how to level with, with people. You pepper in a couple times you saying, I'm in it for the science and skeptics will just we have it. a big old boner for that. We they'll, love just love, they'll love it. Yeah. They'll, you'll have their full attention. You got me. I just don't think that there's another country so far ahead of us that they could like lap us like this. Um, who made fidget spinners? Where'd those come from? That's probably US. That's not tech. Now that we've covered the genesis of the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, let's get into a few of its many discoveries. We'll dissect three videos recently released by To The Stars Academy of Arts and Science from the Department of Defense that are both exciting and dare I say, unearthly. For the first video, dubbed Gimbal, Little information has been released to the public. What we do know is that it is footage taken from a Navy FA-18 Super Hornet during an encounter with an unidentified object. However, there is audio capturing real military pilots' reactions to what they're seeing. Dude, there's a whole fleet of them, look on the ASA. Dude, there's a whole fleet of them, look on the ASA. My gosh. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Oh, I think, dude. Yeah, it was interesting when you see it just sort of 
rotate. Yeah, yeah. You know? That was merely to whet your appetite. Is your appetite wet now? Is it... Are you ready for some more? Yeah, yeah I'm excited for more videos. <laughs> that was a good one. The next video, known as Go Fast, was released by the Department of Defense in March of 2018. What we know about Go Fast is that this video was taken in 2015 somewhere along the East Coast. The footage is also from a FA-18 Super Hornet and has audio of the pilots experiencing the encounter. Yeah, it would look like it was going very fast. It looked very small. Yeah, I mean, it's from a distance. Were they up very, very high and it was allegedly closer to yeah. the water? It was closer, and you know, most people have the same description, and that kind of looked like the other object where they kind of look like Tic Tacs, yeah. like, some, like flying little Tic Tacs. Mm -hmm. And once again, no signs of visible propulsion. Wouldn't it be cool if aliens were really small? Like, like, a like a coffee cup? Like a coffee cup. Like if we were shooting this episode and something just hovered by our head right here? Yeah, that'd be cool if they were real little. And then a cat like jumps up and grabs it and just <laughs> <laughs> Now, onto the last and perhaps most compelling video titled Flare One, also known as the Nimitz Incident. On November 14th, 2004, Commander David Fravor, a commanding officer of the VFA-41 Black Aces and Lieutenant Commander Jim Slate were told to go check out mysterious aircrafts that had been spotted multiple times over the past two weeks. Interviews and reports about the craft noted aerial feats that the U.S. military was not capable of, maneuvers such as dropping from more than 60,000 feet to just about 50 feet above water at supersonic speeds, then stopping abruptly and hovering in that position. As Fravor and Slate made their way to the aircrafts, Fravor says that he looked down at the ocean and saw a disturbance in the water that looked like boiling water over something that just barely submerged. Above that, he noticed an oval-shaped hovering aircraft just 50 feet above the water, measuring about 40 feet in length, which he likened to a tic-tac. The aircraft seemed to be moving irregularly over the water in all directions. Fravor started to descend in a circular motion toward the mysterious aircraft, but it began ascending. When he tried to go directly toward the object, it darted off. Quote, it accelerated like nothing I've ever seen, end quote. The pilots were then instructed to make their way 60 miles to a meetup point known as the Cap Point. Moments later, the pilots were radioed, quote, Sir, you won't believe it, but that thing is at your Cap Point, end quote. The aircraft had reappeared in their radar. The two pilots were still over 40 miles out from the point. The object had disappeared before the pilots were able to reach the meetup point. This is a great example of, you know, they're being called out there to go. It's not like they were just like doing something else and they saw the Tic Tac flying by. Like, what's Tic Tac doing here? Someone called them and said, hey, we got Tic Tacs. <laughs> we need you out here, stat. Yeah. They're like, we got a Tic Tac call. Let's go check out these Tic Tacs. Well, they also asked them, do you guys have missiles on board in case they had to blow it out of the sky? Yeah. These are some serious Tic Tacs. These are some, with some tactical Tic Tacs. We need your missiles out here. So they get out there, they're hunting down Tic Tacs, and they don't bring better cameras. They just got this dumb thing. It's, in the, it's in the moment. It's yeah, in the... I know, but, but and frankly, the, the camera that locks onto it, it's less impressive. Get a nice wide shot oh of that God. thing zipping past. Upon his return to the USS Nimitz, Fravor became the butt of jokes as news of his encounter had made its way around the ship. Fravor told another pilot about the incident, quote, I have no idea what I saw. It had no plumes, wings, or rotors, and outran our F-18s. I want to fly one, end quote. Those ranking higher than Fravor did not investigate the incident further. In 2017, Fravor recalled his experience saying, quote, I don't think I was a nut job as an officer in the Navy. I wasn't drunk. I don't do drugs. I got a good night's rest. It was a clear day. I think someone should have looked into it. Having talked to some of the other folks, it's a big frustration that it's coming out now and wasn't discussed back in 2004." End quote. Fravor spoke of the technology he witnessed saying, quote, this is revolutionary technology to be able to accelerate, go up and down. Think about the advances that would bring to mankind. What if it actually starts to get people to think outside the box? End quote. Can you imagine seeing the ocean boil? 
And then just having to, you know, you get back, everyone's like, oh, yeah, you saw the ocean boil? Oh, yeah, you did you? Oh, my God. And you're like, I'll tell you what, if you're out there and fucking boil. If, if you're out there and you see something extraordinary and you look around yourself and you see that you're the only person seeing this extraordinary feat, just know that you are going to be crazy from then on. That's what you're going to be labeled as. No one's ever going to believe you saw anything. And that is the most frustrating thing on Earth. And on that note, Let's get into some theories as to what these pilots could have been seeing. There seems to be two camps. There are those very encouraged by these encounters and what they could mean for the existence of extraterrestrials. And then there are those that are not so convinced that they indicate anything. Let's start with the latter. The first theory is that perhaps these unexplained phenomena are simply unexplained happenings that don't specifically indicate anything including aliens. MIT astrophysicist Sarah Seeger on unknown object origin, quote, when people claim to observe truly unusual phenomena, sometimes it's worth investigating seriously. What people sometimes don't get about science is that we often have phenomena that remain unexplained, end quote. It's also possible that these encounters are of completely terrestrial origin. Another country could be creating and testing advanced technology that we are simply unaware of. An anonymous former congressional staffer claims this was a reason for forming the program in the first place, posing the question, quote, was this China or Russia trying to do something or has some propulsion system we are not familiar with, end quote. Andrew Simeon, the director of the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Institute Center in Berkeley, says that after years of studying, we're still short on research indicating that aliens do exist. Quote, objective description of any phenomena should be backed up by compelling evidence. And despite many decades of reports of various UFO and abduction phenomena, we don't have much evidence. Moreover, astronomers spend their lives looking at the sky with a wide variety of telescopes and techniques, and we have never snapped a picture of an unexplained spaceship." End quote. And Neil deGrasse Tyson simply says, quote, call me when you have a dinner invite from an alien. End quote. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't like being lumped in with him. Why is that? You're not on the Neil deGrasse Tyson train? He's always a little too pleased with himself. And I know I'm often pleased with myself. You're too. quite pleased with yourself. I think you dig the smell of your own farts. Mm, that's not true. Um, good so theory, though. Um, <laughs> the second theory is that the encounters like the ones shown in these videos perhaps suggest extraterrestrial life. People in this camp claim the videos are just scratching the surface and are grounds for even more research into the topic. Those who come out about their involvement with the program all seem to criticize the government and its research or lack thereof. Elizondo states that there were senior officials in the Department of Defense that objected to the program for various reasons. Elizondo explained, quote, in the end, however, I couldn't carry out that mission because the department, which was understandably overstretched, couldn't give it the resources that the mounting evidence deserved. End quote. Christopher Mellon, the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence under both Clinton and Bush, cites embarrassment or potential damage to a reputation as a reason for the lack of attention on the issue within the Pentagon. Quote, Nobody wants to be the alien guy in the national security bureaucracy. Nobody wants to be ridiculed or sidelined for drawing attention to the issue. This is true up and down the chain of command, and it is a serious and recurring impediment to progress. End quote. In the end, the government said the program was shuttered in 2012. However, its existence was not made public until late 2017. That means the program was mostly hidden from public knowledge for 10 years. Spokesperson Thomas Crossan for the Pentagon on the closing of the program, quote, it was determined that there were other higher priority issues that merited funding, and it was in the best interest of the DOD to make a change, end quote. However, since its official closing, program supporters say officials that worked on the project continued their work in investigations on top of their other assigned tasks in the Defense Department. Elizondo resigned in October 2017 as a protest to the secrecy surrounding the project. Elizondo wrote a resignation letter to Secretary of Defense Jim Mattis in which he described the problems with the government's operation of the program. Quote, despite overwhelming evidence at both the classified and unclassified levels, certain individuals in the department remain staunchly opposed to further research on what could be a tactical threat to our pilots, sailors, and soldiers, and perhaps even an existential threat to our national security. End quote. Elizondo entered the private sector to continue the research he wasn't able to further with the government. Quote, I left to find an environment where investigating these phenomena is priority number one. End quote. This is typical. You know, in every disaster movie or alien movie or whatever, something along those lines, there is a character in it 
that everyone thinks is crazy. Oh, always. And then, and then and everything goes to hell, yeah. and, ever, and then now people are running to this dude for answers, and he's not so crazy. I'm just saying, I know that's a movie, obviously, but it seems that, you know, reality is mimicking fiction here. Yeah. Along with a few other people involved in the program, including Christopher Mellon, Elizondo has gone on to become part of the To The Stars Academy of Arts and Science to continue their study of the unexplained. The Academy's president and CEO is Tom DeLong, formerly of the band Blink-182. The corporation's mission is to look into, quote, exotic science and technologies, end quote, by blending and utilizing science, aerospace, and entertainment. Mellon claims that those involved in the military are approaching To The Stars Academy to investigate more happenings similar to those he's described because of the Department of Defense's poor handling of reported incidents. It's admirable to maybe hang your hat on your belief so strongly and devote this amount of time and research to the aid of everyone else. I'm gonna assume he's doing it to aid everyone else, not just to be like, I told you so. Well, but at the same time, these people probably have fat stacks, right? Blink-182 yeah, sold right. a lot of yeah, albums. And they sold a lot of albums. They had a lot of records. He's living a cozy life. What if aliens, this is bringing it back full circle. Bring it back. What if aliens are small? Uh-huh. Like you said before. I'd still love that. And Tom yeah. DeLonge sings all the small things. And we look back at all the small things, and we see that inside the song is actually a coded message that explains aliens are small things. I... Let's examine the lyrics after this, but I think we might find a code in here. I think we can national treasure this. So, do aliens really exist? Despite numerous sightings, it seems that no one can agree on this topic until we get a clear visual, hard evidence, and maybe even a declaration from aliens themselves. The mystery will remain unsolved. When it comes to trying to prove aliens' existence, this program and its findings are the best chance we have at doing that. It's definitely offered the best case, I would say. Yeah, it seems like they're going about it in a somewhat respectable way. Well, because think about it. When you're trying to prove aliens, what do you need? You need... Proof. <laughs> Number one. You need... Paramount. You need video. Uh-huh. And you need uh, people of stature or people with uh, credentials yeah. to believe that, that proof. This has both of them. I feel like the videos speak for themselves. I feel like they show things that are clearly unexplainable. And I think that's enough to make the jump, at least to say, maybe we should research this a little more. I think we should research it more, because we don't know what it is. Probably aliens. No, can't say that. It might be aliens. Could be. Could be a thousand things. Could be a I'll million things. I'll take it. Things. I'll take it.